Tim, we're here at uh, the Starag Tech Days in Switzerland and I couldn't help but notice you've got a really nice part of your machining in there. What are you doing and what are you, sh what are you showcasing? Yeah, we, we're lucky we've got a titanium uh, test part which we've designed ourselves so there's no confidentiality problems with uh, other customers. And we're developing uh, processes, bliss processes within the company using the MB151 machine tool. Okay, now you've got three particular parties involved in what we'd class as a collaboration yes. here. It's called yes. Starag, Karen Engineering, yes. and Balloon. Correct, yeah. What is it that you're doing or showing? Okay, uh, the Bloom technology we're using for actually measuring the tools before they come in and being used on the process. That's qualification of the tooling. The second part is Karen, which is a force monitoring system, which is mounted inside the machine. And when the cut is working in the cut, it's producing a force level which we're monitoring. And in the end, we're comparing that to our calculated values that we predicted for the process. Right, what, why do you need to do all this? Why, why can't this machine just, you put one of those on there and machine it? In, in essence, you could just put a program on, put a tool in, cross your fingers, and uh, push the button, uh, then you would actually probably waste a lot of valuable BLISC material. Uh, what we're trying to do is avoid too much testing, doing a lot more work offline, predicting cam forces uh, to get to a, a safe, efficient level before we go testing in real material. Okay, so what are the problems that this will identify that you'll solve? Okay, at the end of the day, we want uh, an efficient process that suits the machine. These are uh, things uh, like forces that don't overload a spindle, for example, don't overload a rotary table. So if we can predict correctly the torques on each of those features, we can maximize the, the tools we select, and, but not overload and cause a safety problem for breaking tools or breaking parts on the machine. Now, there's a lot of material to be removed when you're machining something yes. like this. So are we talking about just the finishing processes or are we talking about the roughing? What part of the um, machining element is a lot of, A lot of we try to make an efficient roofing process because that's a, at least 50% of the time spent roofing. If we can reduce that time by making an efficient process, uh, we're going to save time overall. So a lot of the power monitoring uh, originally is related to roofing, but the current system also has, uh, gives us some safety uh, while we're also finishing because we're monitoring also power and coolant levels and in the event of something going wrong, the Karen system will cause some sort of retract or fail safe stopping procedure in the machine. So you've got two levels here. Yes. You've got something that you've written, yes. and then you've got the Karen engineering, which is then give it, delivering its own set of results. Yes. And somewhere between the two is the, is the right strategy. Is that really what you're getting to? Exactly. You can run a production process once you've established the process in a safe way, and you get the Karen to monitor your staying within some limits. If a tool goes off or the coolant fails, then you've got the Karen to help with that 24 lights out sort of scenario and, and safety. Okay, last question from me. We've seen this here in a BLISC. Is this relevant in industry though, in, on other applications, or does it really have to be a high value part? Um, because I'm thinking there's a lot gone into this process you're talking about, and some components may not warrant it. Is that a fair? Yeah, uh, fair a, lot, a lot of these parts are flying parts. And for example, OEMs, they require this system to be on a machine to qualify parts. Without that, they can't life the part because it's obviously got to fly 10,000 flying hours. If there's a broken or a stress area on the part and it's not being captured because of a coolant failure on the process, then that's a problem. So really, it's required by OEMs because they're flying parts.